This right here is the only lesson on shout grooves that you'll ever need to see. This video is sponsored by robbrownapparel.com. That's me. I don't know if you knew this, but I have an online shop full of cool merch for drummers. I got t-shirts, hoodies, snapbacks, jackets, few accessories in there. Make sure you hit the link in the description box, head over to the shop, take a look around. You'll see this hoodie in there too. 15% off orders, automatically applied at checkout. Smooth shout out to everyone that has picked up a peach of, peach of, piece of merch up until now. Every time you pick up something from the shop, you support the channel, so I highly appreciate it. I'm here to make sure that y'all look cool at your rehearsals, at your gigs, at your backyard barbecues, and your divorce hearings. Join the community, let everybody know what you do, and you can support one of your favorite channels while you're doing it. Now let's get down with this here lesson. So this video is for all of my fellow church drummers and gospel drummers out there looking for tips on how to play shout grooves. Because when that praise break breaks out in the middle of service, you want to be able to handle your business. So the first and most important tip I have for y'all by playing shout grooves is to take the pressure off of yourself to get fancy. All right? There's no need to worry about playing all kinds of fast doubles on the kick. You can if you want, but I mean, sometimes that tempo can swell up to 160, 170 beats per minute. So the last thing you want is to be seen up there, you know, giving yourself a cramp while you're hitting your fat burning zone, trying to get all of these fast licks out. It's just not necessary. So here's all you need to do. My simple approach to playing shout grooves is just our good friend, the eighth note. That's it. Between my kick and my snare, I'm just playing eighth notes. Boom, crack, boom, crack. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. That is all I'm doing between the kick and the snare. The magic actually happens with the right hand. This is the busiest part of playing shout grooves, at least when I play them. There's enough going on with the rest of the band that you don't have to get fancy with the kick and the snare. All you got to do is just hold it down. Boom, crack, boom, crack, boom, crack, boom, crack, boom, crack. Just like that. You'll be very surprised at just how fast you can go comfortably just by doing that. Right hand, you can play either quarters or eighth notes, and that's it. Now the thing that makes the shout groove exciting to play for me and the thing that gives it energy is the bell on the ride. This is the busiest part of the shout groove when I'm playing it. You can get as busy as you want with that bell and it'll never get in the way of what's going on. So basically what's happening is you're just playing just a bunch of random sort of syncopated patterns on the bell. And that's really it. So this is where the work comes in because it does take a little bit of practice and effort to be able to do that comfortably and get your speed up. But that's what you got a practice pad for. So all you really need to do is just play a few syncopated patterns on the bell 
over the eighth notes, the boom, crack, boom, crack. Work up your tempo so that you can play it comfortably. And you're good to go. So I have provided five different, relatively simple patterns that you can play on the bell. There's a free PDF. You'll find it in the description box. Just go ahead, download that. Practice these five, okay? These are gonna become your shout bell vocabulary. The point is, get used to these five patterns, and then once you learn them, you can just kind of weave in and out, do whatever you want with them. So, to show you what I'm talking about, I'm gonna show you the first two. So that is my very simple approach to playing shout grooves and it gets the job done. Kick in the snare, eighth notes, one and two and three and four and, and then just get a few different bell patterns in your vocabulary. Practice them until you can get them up to speed. I would say minimum 150 beats per minute. And then you'll be able to handle yourself in any praise break situation that materializes. song that you heard me playing along with that is available for download if you want to grab it you can get that at shedtracks.com i will leave a link in the description box you can head on over there take it for a little inspiration in the meantime once you can get everything up to speed throw that tune on and start shedding and that's it thanks for watching this video drop a comment below if you got one don't forget hit that merch shop 15 percent off all orders get yourself a cool t-shirt for the summertime Share this video if you dig it. Like, subscribe. See you next video.